Hi there, this is tutorial 6 for the Edexcel Statistics 1 A-Level module and it's on stem and leaf plots and outliers. Uh, as always, if you're looking for fur further help with your studies, do check out Mr. Arnold's Maths uh, on youtube.com. So, um, stem and leaf plots is something you should have come across before at GCSE and we're just going to expand on it slightly, but pretty much everything in this uh, tutorial should be straightforward enough. So we have a stem and leaf plot here and just to explain briefly, this is what we call the stem and these green values over here are the leaves and we read the stem and leaf diagram or the stem and leaf plot using the key. So the key says that when I have a two in red, the number in red with the bar and the number in green means 21. So in other words, if I'm looking at this bit here, that just means 21. Now suppose I read this part of the stem with this leaf, that would mean 42. So it's just a nice, nice organized way of putting this data into a diagram. And when it's in a stem and leaf diagram or a stem and leaf plot, it's quite easy then to work out various pieces of information like the median, the interquartile range and the range, etc. So if we go to our diagram now and I want to work out the median, well, let's have a look and see where it is. Now, you'll notice that it's already in order for me. So if I look at these values here on the outside, which just tell me the number of values in each row. So this particular row has two has two values. This particular row has five values, etc. I can add up these numbers. Uh, two and five is seven. Four is 11. And 12 is 23 plus the seven gives me a grand total of 30. So there's 30 data points in this stem and leaf plot. So if I want the median, I need the point that's halfway between the 15th and the 16th point. So counting along, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So between 15 and 16, I need whatever data point is in here. And what's halfway between 32 and 35? Well, I can just add them together. 32 plus 35 and divide that by 2. So it's going to be 67 divided by 5, which is going to be 33.5. So the median for this data set is 33.5. Now, if I want the lower quartile, we do the number of values. So I'm looking for Q1. So we do the number of values divided by 4, which is going to be 30 divided by 4, which is 7.5. And if you remember in the Edexcel spec, it says that when you have a number that's not a whole number, you go to the next one up. So we're going to round up and look for the eighth value. That may differ for different exam boards, but for Edexcel, it says that you round up to the next value. So we're looking for the eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll get my lower quartile from there. So Q1 is equal to 21 and I can get the upper quartile by doing let's do it up here doing 3n over 4 n is 30 so 3 times 30 is 90 and 90 divided by 4 goes in let's just use the calculator here because I don't want to make a mess of it 90 divided by 4 is 22.5 so 22.5 like before, we go up to the next term because it's not a whole number. So we're going to look for the 23rd term. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So it's this leaf with that stem. So Q3 must be equal to 39. Therefore, the interquartile range, or in other words, Q3 minus Q1 gives us 39, take away 21, which is 18. Now, if we wanted, we could look for the mode here as well. Or indeed, we could work out the range by doing the highest value, which is 5, and take away the lowest value, which will be 48. But that's just some of the things that you should already know from using a stem and leaf plot. Now, 
Some of you may have come across this before, some of you may have not, but we can also organize a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram. So here we have the marks out of 60 for a group of students and it's displayed below in a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram. Now, if you look here, the key says that two with the line and the one and the line and the three means 12 for the boys and 13 for the girls. So let's just go to that part of our stem and leaf diagram. And we can see here, the one, the bar and the two means 12 for the boys. So we're almost reading this backwards. And uh, the one with the bar and the three means 13 for the girls. So let's take another color out. So it's reading the stem with the leaf and the stem with the leaf. So we again, we can do the same thing. We can work out the median and the interquartile range. So let's work out the total number of people in the boys' side. Four and three is seven, seven and five is 12, 12 and four, 16, and four is 20. So we've got 20 boys, six, 11, 13, 15 girls. So let's work out the median for the boys is going to be between the 10th and the 11th boy. So we've got to work that out. One, two, three, four. And notice I'm counting from the lowest to the highest. Always count from the lowest to the highest. Do not count in this direction on this side. We must count from lowest to highest. So do bear that in mind. So let's count along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is 11. So it's halfway between. 32 and 32 which must be 32 and for the girls we need uh, the point that's halfway between uh, if we have 15 points we need the point that's halfway in between which would be the eighth value one two three four five six seven eight which is here and just to check that it's the absolute middle value we should have seven values either side one two three four five six seven and one two three four five six seven so this indeed is correct so we get a median of 31 we can also work out, work out the interquartile range here so for the boys we need uh, we need to do n over 4 to get our q1 which is going to be 5 20 divided by 4 is 5 so I need the fifth term 1 2 3 4 5 so it's 32 that's our lower quartile our upper quartile will be three times that so it will be the 15th term uh, 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so that's going to be 47 so the interquartile range for the boys is 47 47 take away 23 take away 23 which is going to be um, 24 so the interquartile range for the boys is 24 and for the girls we can do that in a similar manner so we need to do once again n over 4 the number of values divided by 4 to get to find out where q1 lies and remember if it's not a whole number we go to the next one up well 15 divided by 4 I think is 3.75 but we'll just double check that uh, 15 divided by 4 is that's the wrong calculation 15 divided by 4 is 3.75 so that means we're going up to the next value so we want actually the fourth value and again, this is how it states in the Edexcel textbook to work out the uh, lower quartile and upper quartile. So we need number four. So counting along, one, two, three, four. So that's the lower, qu uh, lower quartile for the girls. And the upper quartile is just going to be three times bigger than that. So working that out, it's going. it says 11.25 here. So we must round up to the next one, which would be 12. So we want the 12th value in the list 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so that's 47 so the interquartile range for the girls is going to be 47 take away 27 which is 20
So what, what does this data actually tell me? Well, if this was about marks in an exam, I could say, well, on average, the boys have done better because they have a higher median than the girls. So on average, the boys did better. But if you look at the interquartile range, the interquartile range for the boys is 24, so the data is more spread out than the girls. That means the girls were more consistent and the boys' values varied more. Okay, enough from me. Time for you to have a go. So pause the video now and work out the median and interquartile range for the boys and the girls. Okay, hopefully you've managed to do that. So here are the solutions. Um, the boys median I measured to be 34, so it was halfway in between these two points here. Uh, for the girls it was also 34, and the interquartile range for the boys was 49, take away 23, gave us 26, and for the girls, 46 take away 23, which was 23. So in this case, on average, we couldn't say anybody did better. But again, the girls are more consistent because their interquartile range is smaller than the boys. So that means the boys' values varied more. Okay, just one last thing to have a look at, and that's to do with outliers. Now, an outlier is an extreme value that doesn't fit the pattern or the trend of the data. So if you just have a look at this uh, example here I have some data points put on a dot plot so we can see we've got one we've got two twos two threes two fours two fives four sixes sorry five sixes and then we've got this 29 up here so this is what we tend to call an extreme value or an outlier so this would be an outlier because it doesn't seem to fit the overall trend of the data but we need a method of checking for outliers. So at what point does this value here become an outlier? So at what point, if it was nine, would it be an outlier? If it was 13, would it be an outlier? We need a method to work out or to measure if something is an outlier. So we're going to use this method. Now, this method says that you take a value um, and if it's bigger than the upper quartile plus 1.5 times by Q3 take away Q1, which is in fact the interquartile range, if that value is bigger than this calculation, then that value is an outlier. Similarly, if we take a value and we find that it's less than, it's smaller than the lower quartile, take away 1.5 times by the interquartile range. I'm going to put that here. Let's just move that across. The technology is going wrong on me here. Yes, so if the value is bigger than the upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, or if a value is smaller than the lower quartile take away 1.5 times the interquartile range, then we can consider an out, it an outlier. So this is the general method. Now, sometimes in the exam, they will give you other ways of doing it, but they'll tell you what formula to use. But this is one that you will need to know. So let's have a look at this in action. So here we've got a stem and leaf diagram again, and I need to determine if there is any outliers. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to work out the upper quartile, the lower quartile, and the interquartile range. So let's see, first of all, how many data points we have. Uh, 7, 15, 27, 33. I've got 40 data points. So that means Q1 is going to be located at N over 40, or N over 4, so 40 over 4 which is 10 so it's the 10th value i'm glad the way that worked out nicely so counting along 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so that's where i find the lower quartile or q1 let's look for the upper quartile q3 remember is 3 times the value of n divided by 4 which in this case is going to be the 30th value. So 
again let's have a look that was the 10th 9 uh, 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 so that guy there is our upper quartile so the interquartile range q3 take away q1 is 41 take away 29 so 41 take away 29 which gives us 12. now if we think back the formula said that if a value if a value let's change colors for this if a value was bigger than the upper quartile plus 1.5 one and a half times the interquartile range it must be an outlier so let's check let's take the upper quartile which will be 41 and i'm going to add one and a half times the interquartile range so 1.5 times by the interquartile range which is 12 and that gives us 41 plus 18 and 41 plus 18 is 59 so is there any values is there any values in my stem and leaf diagram that's bigger than 59 and looking along I can see no so there's no outliers in this direction as the values get bigger let's look in the other direction as well so we need to do we need to check and see if there's any value that's smaller than the lower quartile or q1 subtract one and a half times the interquartile range so let's see if there's anything that falls in here q1 we worked out to be 29 so 29 subtract one and a half times the interquartile range well we already worked that out that was 18 and 21 take away 18 gives us 3 that should be 29 i knew something had gone wrong there yeah uh, q1 is 29 so 29 take away 18 is 11. is there any value in my data set that's smaller than 11 so if we look along we can clearly see that these two guys here must be outliers because they fall outside they are smaller than this criteria and if they're smaller than that they must be an outlier so 0 5 and 0 7 or 5 and 7 if you like 5 and 7 are outliers and that's all there is to it okay and see if you can determine if there's any outliers okay hopefully you've managed to try that um, here is the solutions so similar question uh, in pretty much every sense of the way we do find out that 41 and 47 are outliers in that direction okay you should now be able to complete exercise 4a and 4b from the edxl s1 textbook uh, do have a read of um, the first two parts of that chapter before you continue on and do the uh, the questions uh, that's all from me uh, i'll talk to you again sometime good luck with the revision